Broadway has barreled into Boston with the hit Sondheim musical Into the Woods. After a wildly popular six-month run in New York, much of the Broadway cast decided to take the show on the road for a national tour. That includes Tony Award-winning actor Gavin Creel, who works double-time in the musical, performing now at the Emerson Colonial Theater as both the wolf and Cinderella's oh-so-immodest prince. Am I not sensitive, clever, well-mannered, considerate, passionate, charming, as kind as I'm handsome, an heir to a throne? You are everything maidens could wish for. Then why no? Do I know? The girl must be mad. And Gavin Creel joins me now. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm never going to get used to watching that, ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's nice to be here. Uh, let's talk about Stephen Sondheim and what he's done with Into the Woods, this musical. I mean, it was so clever, Stephen Sondheim writing the music and James Lapine, the book, about taking something that we all have access to, all of these great stories, like Jack and the Beanstalk and Little Red Riding Hood and, and Cinderella and so forth. But where does he take us beyond that? Um... You know, it's it's a question everybody asks is like, what is the, the the relevance of this show? Why this show? Why now? And I have to say, Sondheim and Lapine, like you said, take something we all know that's sort of part of our heartbeat, how we grew up, how we learned how to treat one another through these fairy tales and these allegories, and they remind us that it's still life's lessons in our faces but they do it with like a, a little bit of a wicked adult twist. You know, it's a little spin of the mustache and just reminding us that Jack wasn't that good of a kid. He was a little bit of a, 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 a I, I can't say it without saying a curse word. He was just a little bit off. Well, he was a and, murderer is what he was. Yes, he was. He was Okay, yeah, there he was. He was a murderer, he was the thief. Um, little Red is ravenous in her own way and I think the wolf was a victim. I know it's my character, so I play it. I play it. <laughs> but it's just, it's just neat how they took these stories and, and made them into something that uh, reminded us that we could, they are still applicable to even today. Well, I want to ask you about playing the wolf in a moment, but first of all, we just saw you, uh, one of your songs in the show, and the, the complexity of singing Sondheim, all of those mm. words, consonants, are not your friend, are, are they? He was no, so mathematical. No. The number of times that I have like gone up on lyrics or mixed them up, I'm embarrassed to say is many. But um, he he writes Sondheim writes in a way that makes you want to re-engage each time you sing it, and it's like Shakespeare in that way. That there's always more to find. There's always you can go deeper and deeper. And I've been doing the show now for oh gosh, 250 times at this point, and it's still it still surprises me. And I think it's neat because each audience is different. So each audience that we have at, at Emerson Colonial, it's just this new discovery. We're opening up this gift each time. And I have to be reminded, like, dig into those words because there's a lot of them and, and people want to hear them. That's what's so great about our production, I think, is we have the entire orchestra sitting on stage with us. We have this um, entire beautiful cast that is there making the words sit front and center. And, it, and we, we keep hearing from people, I could understand everything you were saying, and I, I, got the, I got the show in such a way that I've never understood it before. So it's pretty special. Yeah, I certainly count myself in that category. Going back to you playing um, the wolf, what are the mental calisthenics involved in playing two very different characters, the wolf and Cinderella's prince, within 20 minutes of each other on stage? Yeah, it's pretty quick. This, we have a, a little quick change between when the wolf uh, goes to his demise. I won't give it away. Everybody knows he dies. Um, and then I switch very quickly into a full, obviously my hair is blue in real life, but um, I have a full wig change, full costume change. Shout out to Sophie Lynn and my wonderful dresser here in town, Erica. It's a team effort and we, it's a lot of fun. As far as the characters go, I really enjoy physical uh, approach to every act, every part I play as an actor. I love approaching it physically. So the wolf is hunched and and hungry, and and the prince is very upright and regal, and it's it's really it's really fun. And Andrea Hood designed two incredible costumes, so I just kind of put the costumes on and let them do the work. <laughs> Well, I want to ask you about another project you're working on. This is your own. It's called Walking Through that you're developing. I think it's so... Walk, walk On Through, it's oh, called. Oh, sorry, Walk On Through. Uh, yeah. What, uh, in discovering art, 
for the first time at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and this is something that you were able to work on during the pandemic and downtime. I know it had started before that. Perhaps we'll even see it here in Boston at some point. But what was that experience mm -hmm. to, to, to discover the art at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York? You know, I have to say it's it's in the show, but it's an embarrassing admission to be, you know, my early 40s and having never stepped foot in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. But I just grew up um, with a challenge attention span and um, I wasn't versed, well versed in fine art and art education. And I was approached to possibly make a piece of theater um, in association with the art at the museum. So I will literally just went in and started walking around and taking notes at anything. I just went, huh, or wow. And over about three years, I have created a piece that sort of examines art and life and love and loss and loneliness through about 40 different pieces of art in the museum. And I'm really excited to share it with the world. We're hopefully gonna have a production in the fall in New York and, and then expand it from there and hopefully be able to bring it around the world. I just am really excited to share it with, with everyone. Does that exposure to the visual arts, has that changed who you are as a performing artist? That's a great question. Yes, I think so. When I was in acting school, we used to go, they used to say, go to a museum and try to find art that, that the essence of which speaks to the character you're going to play. And we would go to like the, the library and go through pictures and um, photographs and try to find things that help bring the character to life. But since I spent so much time at the Met and really had a, a life changing experience there, I think I do see artistic expression kind of everywhere now. It's like the museum. I, I always said the show Walk On Through is the, the Met is to the world as, as me as a, as a middle aged man is like having this midlife crisis and going, where do I fit here? I've had this amazing career and this unbelievable luck but I don't really know where I fit in this building. And I realize, oh, it's not just the building, it's kind of like my life at this moment. I don't really know where I fit. And I thought I had it all figured out and the healing nature of art in that, that I just sort of saw all these names across crossing spans of time and saying like, I'm here too, and you're gonna be okay. It just, I found it very affirming. Well, it's, it's really surprising to hear you say that, especially after you had won the Tony for, for Hello, yeah. Dolly, and, and one might assume you're, you had already moved to this height of your career. Actually, that was just a, a way of me to segue to ask if Bette Midler is, is, is really the divine Miss M after your experience working with her. The most, the most divine, the hardest working, the funniest, the driest, um, and just constantly futzing with every beat, wanting to make things better, wanting to like dig deeper. She never did the show the same way twice. She would find a big laugh and the next night do it completely different just to see what else she could find. I loved working with her. Well, Gavin Krill, you, it, and it's fabulous to watch you in this show. It is just glorious. Congratulations and thank, thank you, you for being with us. My pleasure, thank you very much. Into the Woods is running through Sunday at the Emerson Colonial Theater. For more information, head to emersoncolonialtheater.com.